California Conference of Catholic Bishops meets twice a year. We have a fall meeting and a spring meeting. And at both of those meetings, we, we have a, a set routine and a, a set agenda. And a major part of the agenda is always a, a briefing from our executive director, Kathleen Domingo, who is absolutely wonderful, and then our legal counsel, as well as lobbyists that we have in Sacramento. Some of you don't know that the California Conference of Bishops is, uh, is employing lobbyists to, to work on our behalf, on behalf of, of Catholic issues, on behalf of, of life issues, and very active. That's very tough going because of the, the nature of uh, the legislators in the state of California, uh, the vast majority in both uh, the Senate of California and the Assembly, uh, Democrat. So it's, 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 hard, it's hard sledding, but we sled along nonetheless. So in our briefing during our meetings, we go through pieces of legislation that, uh, that pertain to uh, Catholic moral values, to human values, and we evaluate our response to them and to what extent do we want to oppose them. And, and uh, so we, we're, we have limited resources ourselves, so we, we have to be focused, laser beam focused on, on uh, what we address. But during this past meeting, uh, at the time of the legislative uh, review, normally in any given year, there might be two or three pieces of legislation dealing with uh, specifically abortion, either the uh, expansion of it, the protection of it, making the availability of it uh, much broader in the state of California. Two or three pieces of, of legislation, proposed bills, in other words. This year we are dealing with 22 pieces of legislation. That's uh, uh, astronomical, astronomical. And that was before the leaking of a Supreme Court opinion that uh, was written by uh, Justice Alioto. Uh, indicating that the Supreme Court may, in fact, overturn Roe versus Wade. And the dust-up that that produced, and there are three words that leap off the page for me in, in taking all of this in these past few weeks. Hysteria, euphoria, and I would say even ignorance. Hysteria on the part of those who are pro-death, because that's what I call it. They call themselves pro-choice. It's a nice name to cover up something that is uh, not nice at all, but uh, really evil, the, the taking of an innocent life. Uh, pretty much at any time during uh, pregnancy, that's what Roe versus Wade, in a sense, guaranteed and enshrined as a constitutional right. So the, the hysteria on that end of the spectrum and uh, the, the almost violent reaction and protesting outside of the homes of, of uh, justices of the Supreme Court, uh, disrupting uh, liturgies, the Holy Eucharist, uh, most uh, singularly uh, when I saw uh, the, the video of, of uh, some people disrupting the Mass at the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels in Los Angeles, where I used to work before, and, uh, and knowing Archbishop Gomez and, and uh, how... Uh, on an emotional, uh, spiritual level, how disruptive that is, how disrespectful that is. But there's uh, nothing respectful on, uh, it seems to me, on, on that, side of, uh, that side of the aisle. And then on the other uh, end of the spectrum, our end of the spectrum, quite frankly, uh, a lot of euphoria, and, and not without reason. It's, it is good news, and if in fact this is the decision of the Supreme Court, it is very good news for life. It is very good, good news for uh, that, that value that, that we uphold and that we hold clearly and dearly in our hearts. It's very good news. But we can't get too excited and we can't get overly happy. That's why I use the word euphoria, because this is, this is one battle in a very long war. And it looks like we might win this battle. We might not. The Supreme Court hasn't really weighed in yet, but we think they, they are going to weigh in on the side of life, which is absolutely wonderful news. But uh, the, the war is still engaged. It's, it's a long struggle that we have. And in all of our states, we will be dealing with this. So for example, the ignorance part, people think that if in fact the Supreme Court does overturn Roe versus Wade, 
abortion will be done in this country. Oh, far from it. It's simply sending this decision back to the states where it was 50 years ago before Roe versus Wade, uh, allowing the states to make those decisions. So in states like ours, California, uh, I, I won't say there'll be no, there are gonna be changes, all right. There, there's going to be more abortion. The, the governor of California, the good Catholic that he claims to be, uh, declared that California will become a, a sanctuary state, a, a sanctuary for abortion. And uh, millions and millions of your tax dollars and, and my tax dollars uh, will go toward expanding abortion. Even before this happened, as I told you, there were 22 bills expanding all of this. We haven't seen anything yet, so we can't get too euphoric. We can't be over the moon happy about the Supreme Court decision. It's a, hopefully it's, it is going to be that good decision, but uh, we will have battles to fight. And let me quote uh, our governor uh, the, the day that uh, the Supreme Court opinion was leaked. Our daughters, sisters, mothers, and grandmothers will not be silenced. The world is about to hear their fury. No kidding. California will not sit back. We are going to fight like hell. And that fight has begun. It, it truly has. It's not the only Catholic who has weighed in on this. There's another famous Catholic, uh, President Biden, who on the same day issued this statement. It concerns me a great deal that after 50 years, we're going to decide that a woman doesn't have the right to choose. The right to choose, again. Uh, Biden told reporters, uh, but even more equally profound is the rationale used, and it would mean that every other decision relating to the notion of privacy is thrown into question. That word privacy crops up quite a bit in the uh, in the debate and dialogue about the Supreme Court decision, Roe versus Wade, because you may remember that in that decision, the Supreme Court defined a right to privacy that really doesn't exist in the Constitution, but they created that right to privacy, and it became enshrined in law. And uh, they, you'll hear the, the phrase settled law as well. In other words, it's done. It's over and done with. It's settled. We've been living with it for some time. You know, we've had settled law before that was changed in this country. We've had settled law about who was human and who, who was not. We've had settled law about uh, who was a slave and who was free. And we've had lots of settled law that has been overturned because it was wrong. So, brothers and sisters, uh, the battle continues. So be strong, be courageous, and be good soldiers in, in this battle. Uh, uh, I hope you know I am with you. Uh, I want to uh, lead you, and I want to be with you in prayer and in action. It is incumbent upon us with these changes, and especially here in the state of California, to do whatever we can to help women who are in crisis, to help women who do have a pregnancy that is unexpected and, and maybe, God bless them, unwanted in their own heart and mind, uh, women who are struggling financially, Walking with Mothers in Need is a wonderful program uh, that I, I believe our diocese will get more involved with, a program designed and offered to us by the National uh, Conference of Catholic Bishops. Uh, another program that will be rolled out by the, the National Conference in June of this year. We were born, we were born ready is the name of that program. And there will be lots of wonderful information to help us to engage uh, in a in a very practical way, uh, again, to get the message out, uh, to, uh, to encourage our politicians and, in a sense, to educate the politicians because in terms of, of our own knowledge and, and, and the, the fleshing out of that knowledge of, of the laws that we, we live under, again, that, that word ignorance lift, just, uh, just leaps off the page for me. So, brothers and sisters, I want to frame this, all of this, this short message with the final words from chapter 30 of the book of Deuteronomy. You've heard these before, but good things not only bear repeating, good things need to be repeated over and over again until they come and they sink from here down to here. 
I call heaven and earth today to witness against you. I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Choose life then that you and your descendants may live by loving the Lord your God, heeding his voice and holding fast to him, for that will mean life for you, a long life for you to live on the land which the Lord swore he would give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that good news to God's holy people, the chosen ones, that, uh, that promise of life. And uh, it comes with uh, our absolute commitment to collaborate with the Lord in that. So brothers and sisters, thank you uh, for being prayer warriors for life. Thank you for those who are uh, absolutely, in a sense, militant for life. God bless you and, and those you love, always and in every way.